Hi, my name is Ray. Me and my friends Dodie, Mimi, and Faffles, we love to come to this wonderful library. Over there, on that great book is Grand Old Holy. She's really old and wise and tells us wonderful stories, when she's awake, that is. Let me tell you the story of how Santa became Santa. A long time ago in a village far away was born a boy named Nicholas. He grew up to be a very kind and generous boy. At a very young age, Nicholas joined the church. Nicholas gave special attention to the children of his village and they were very fond of Nicholas. Nicholas became well known throughout the land as a kind and wise young man. He was soon named a bishop of the church. Nicholas wore a long red robe with a red hat and he traveled on horseback. At every village, happy children would spot his bright robe from a distance and gather on the road to greet him. In one village, Bishop Nicholas heard the sorrowful tale of a poor old man and his three young daughters. The man could no longer feed his daughters and he feared he would have to send them away from him. Nicholas knew he could help this family. That night, while the whole village slept, Nicholas crept up to the hut where the three sisters lived. He climbed up to the rooftop to find the chimney. There, Nicholas dropped three bags of gold, one by one, down through the chimney. Earlier that day, the three sisters had hung their newly washed stockings by the fireplace to dry. Each small bag of gold that Nicholas dropped fell into one of the stockings below. The next morning, the girls were overjoyed to find gold coins in their stockings. Father! They called, running to wake him. We have received a magical gift. As the story of these three sisters spread from village to village, other people began to hang their stockings by the fire, hoping to find a secret gift when they awoke the next morning. Bishop Nicholas enjoyed surprising people. He began to deliver his secret gifts of hope and joy at night while his friends were asleep. For all of his good deeds, Bishop Nicholas was honored as a saint who looks after all children. People all over the world began to celebrate Saint Nicholas Day, which fell on December 6th. They hung their stockings by the fire the night before and woke the next morning to find them filled with candy, fruits, nuts or toys. Soon, people began to celebrate St. Nicholas's good deeds on Christmas Day. Now, people know him as Santa Claus. A true hero of the people, St. Nicholas still delivers his magical gifts of hope and joy each year at Christmas time. Oh, I didn't know the story. So Santa was Nicholas? How cool! I know Santa loves little children, and we love Santa too. I am sure you do. Hi, Holy. Now that you are up, I guess you can tell us a story. Yes, please. I love your Christmas stories. All right. Today's story is about a very wise king. A long time ago, there lived a very wise king about the ways of animals, birds, and trees. Now one breezy day, a tiny bee lost her way and flew right into the king's beautiful palace. The little bee begged the king, Please let me live and I will serve you someday. The king was amused to think a tiny bee could one day serve such a mighty king. He released the bee and said, Go, be on your way for I need nothing more from you today. Many days later, the queen came to visit from a far away land. She heard many people claim this king was very wise. She had to know for sure that this was true. 
she came with many gifts. After a show of friendship, she finally asked, "I hear you're wise," she said. "Would you be willing to put your wisdom to a test?" The king agreed, and she did her best with riddles, tricks, and difficult tests. One day, she gave the king a large gemstone, and through the very middle was a tiny, twisty hole. Let's see if you can put a thread through this gem. She challenged the king with a devious grin. But the king asked a silkworm to climb through the hole, which is not a big problem for a tiny silkworm. And as it did, a thin thread of silk followed the silkworm all the way through. Now the queen was quite angered at the king's show of wisdom, and all the more determined to find a way to trick him. We must have a test," she challenged her advisers. "To prove this king's a fool." So they came up with a plan that would not fail. They ordered the queen's craftsmen to make ninety-nine fake but real-looking flowers. When finished, even the queen could not tell they were fake. And then, from the king's garden, she took just one real flower. And cleverly hid it among all the others. Tomorrow we will make the wise king look foolish. During the party that's held in his honor, we will test the king to find the real flower. The next day, the people gathered from all over the land to attend the party. Then, right after the meal, the queen stood and spoke. Listen, everyone, I have something to say. Just one more test to give the king today. My craftsmen have created many beautiful flowers. They all look real. Ninety-nine are fake, but one is real. Can the king find that one? The king accepted the challenge she handed to him. He sniffed at the flowers, but they all smelled so sweet, and all of the flowers were as soft as could be. The king became a bit perplexed and did not know what to do next. Suddenly, he heard a faint buzzing sound. It was the tiny little bee he saved many days ago. I'm here at your service, sir. I'm here to repay your kindness one breezy day. The tiny bee quickly flew over the flowers, and in no time at all, found the real flower. The king stooped down and plucked the flower. Here is the real one. He handed it to the queen to see, and the craftsman confirmed it was the real one indeed. Finally, the queen had to give in and admit that this king was truly the wisest that ever had been. This was King Solomon, the son of David. When Solomon prayed for wisdom instead of riches, God had said. I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart, so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Moreover, I will give you what you have not asked for, both riches and honor, so that in your lifetime you will have no equal among kings. Wow! What a wise king! Yeah, just like me. <laughs> What? Anyway, Holy, thank you for a wonderful story. King Solomon really was wise and clever. Yes, he was, because God made him so. To watch more videos, please subscribe. Can you please, please tell us a Christmas story from all the great books that you read? Well, yes. Today's story is about the little match girl. Once upon a time, a poor little girl sat in the corner of a street to sell matches. Nobody had bought anything of her the whole day. She was really cold. The flakes of snow covered her long fair hair, which fell in beautiful curls around her neck. From all the windows, the candles were gleaming. And it smelled so deliciously of roast goose. It was New Year's Eve. The poor girl could not go home since she had not sold any matches. 
Her little hands were almost numb with cold. Oh, a match might warm me, she said. She drew one out. It was a warm, bright flame, like a candle. But soon the small flame went out. She had only the remains of the burnt-out match in her hand. She lit another, and where the light fell on the wall, there the wall became transparent, like a veil, so that she could see into the room. On the table was a snow-white tablecloth, and a roast goose steaming with its stuffing of apple and dried plums. Suddenly, the steaming goose hopped down from the dish with knife and fork in its breast. Till it came up to the poor little girl, then the match went out, and nothing but the cold, damp wall was left. She lit another match. Now there she was sitting under the most magnificent decorated Christmas tree. Thousands of lights were burning on the green branches. The little maiden stretched out her hands towards them. Then the match went out. She drew another match against the wall. It was again light, and in the light stood her old grandmother, the only person who had really loved her, so bright and radiant, and so full of love. Grandmother! cried the little one. Oh, take me with you! She rubbed the whole bundle of matches quickly against the wall, and the matches gave a brilliant light. Her grandmother looked so beautiful. She took the little girl in her arm, and both flew in brightness till they were with God. But in the street corner sat the poor girl, with a smiling face, leaning against the wall, frozen to death with one bundle of burnt matches. She wanted to warm herself. People said, no one knew of the beautiful things she had seen. That was a beautiful story. I really, really liked it. The little girl is no longer cold and hungry. She's now with God. Well, I'm glad you did. Hi, Holly. Did you know that I will be playing Joseph in the nativity scene outside the church? And I'm playing Mary. That is nice. But do you know the story of the Christ Child? Uh, yes, I think so. Okay, let me tell you the story. A long time ago, when Rome was a great empire ruled by Caesar Augustus, and Israel was governed by King Herod, in the village of Nazareth lived Joseph and Mary. Joseph was a carpenter, and Mary was his wife. Mary told Joseph of a dream in which she was visited by an angel, who told her she had been chosen to bear the Son of God, and his name was to be Jesus. One day, the emperor sent notice that all persons were to register for a new tax. They were asked to return to the towns of their birth. Joseph and Mary left Nazareth for Bethlehem. Mary, who was with child. And close to the birth, rode on a donkey while Joseph walked beside her. They traveled for many days and only rested at night. When they reached Bethlehem, it was night. They looked for a place to rest, but there were no empty rooms when they reached the inn. As they were being turned away, Joseph mentioned his wife was with child and close to birth. The innkeeper took pity on them and told them of some caves in the nearby hills where shepherds would stay with their cows and sheep. So Joseph and Mary went up into the hills and found the caves. In one cave was a stable room. Joseph cleaned it and made beds of fresh hay. He found a feeding trough which he cleaned and filled with hay to use as a crib. The next night, Mary gave birth to a son, and they named him Jesus, as the angel had said. When the child was born, a great star appeared over Bethlehem that could be seen for miles around. In the fields nearby, shepherds were tending their flocks. An 
angel appeared to them, surrounded by bright light. The shepherds were frightened and tried to run. Fear not, said the angel, for I bring you tidings of great joy. For unto you is born this day in Bethlehem a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly the sky was filled with angels praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, good will toward men. After the angels departed, the shepherds set out for Bethlehem. When they reached the cave, they found the stable, and inside was the child wrapped in swaddling clothes. As the star shined over Bethlehem, in the east three kings would see it. They knew it was a sign, and they set off to follow the star. There was Caspar, the young king of Tarsus, Melchior, a long-bearded old man and leader of Arabia, and Balthazar, the king from Ethiopia. They traveled on camels for many days over the mountains and through the deserts and plains, always following the bright star. When they finally arrived in Bethlehem, they found the child in the manger. The three kings bowed to their knees and offered gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. They would stay the night in the cave and the next day return to their lands to spread the news. Oh wow! The Christ child born in a stable? And the three wise men traveling all the way to see him by just following a star? How cool is that? Yes, it was worth it for them since they got to see the Savior, Christ the Lord. Hmm, children, you should be happy with whatever you get because some children don't get anything. Let me tell you the story about little Gretchen and the wooden shoe. Once upon a time, far away, in a country called Germany, at the edge of a big forest, in a small log cabin, lived little Gretchen and her grandmother. Gretchen and her granny were up early each morning to collect twigs and branches to sell in the village. They did not earn much money, but still, granny and Gretchen were very happy because they loved each other dearly. One of these trips to the town came just the week before Christmas, and Gretchen's eyes lit up at the sight of the lovely Christmas trees and toys which stood in the window of the village store. Poor Gretchen had never owned a toy in her life. That night, after the supper, she said to her grandmother, Granny, it's almost Christmas time. What do you think I'll get this Christmas? She said, looking up eagerly into Granny's face. Dear child, said Granny, shaking her head. You'll have no Christmas this year. We are too poor for that. Oh, but Granny, interrupted little Gretchen. Surely Santa has sent enough toys for every little child. Ah, sweetheart, said Granny. We have no money to spend on Christmas toys. Well, Granny, said Gretchen, her bright, happy tone of voice growing a little less joyous. You forgot all about the Christmas angels. They will not forget any little child. Tonight, I will ask my favorite star to tell them about us. Granny sighed as she half whispered, Poor child, poor child. The days passed on, and the morning before Christmas Eve came. Gretchen made the small house look very pretty with branches of the fir tree and small red berry bouquets. After supper was over, Granny told little Gretchen the story of the coming of the baby Jesus. How the night that he was born, the beautiful angels had sung their wonderful song, 
and how the whole sky had become bright with a strange and glorious light. Granny got ready to go to bed. She slowly took off her heavy wooden shoes and placed them beside the fireplace. Gretchen looked thoughtfully at them for a minute or two and then she said, Granny, the Christmas angels would definitely think of us tonight. I know. So I'm going to take one of your wooden shoes and put it on the windowsill outside. Ah, oh, you foolish, foolish child, said Granny. Tomorrow morning, there will be nothing whatsoever in the shoe. But little Gretchen would not listen. She placed the shoe on the windowsill. Shining brightly in the dark sky was Gretchen's favorite star. Ah, little star, said the child, laughing aloud. Will you whisper to the Christmas angels that little Gretchen wants to have a Christmas gift tomorrow morning, if they have one to spare? The next morning, very early, even before the sun was up, little Gretchen sprang up out of bed, unfastened the door and hurried out to see what the Christmas angels had left in the old wooden shoe. The white snow covered everything. The whole world looked like fairyland. Gretchen carefully lifted down the wooden shoe. She ran hurriedly back into the house, putting her hand into the toe of the shoe as she ran. Oh, Granny! She exclaimed. You didn't believe the Christmas angels would think about us. But see, they have. Here is a dear little bird down in the toe of your shoe. Oh, isn't he beautiful? Granny came forward and saw a tiny bird whose wing was broken by the storm of the night before and who had taken shelter in the safe, dry wooden shoe. She gently took the little bird out of Gretchen's hands and then she showed Gretchen how to make a nice warm nest for the little stranger close beside the fire. Gretchen spent a happy day looking after the little bird. As Granny and she got ready for bed that night, happy Gretchen put her arms softly around Granny's neck and whispered, What a beautiful Christmas we have had today, Granny. Is there anything in the world more lovely than Christmas? No, dear, said Granny, hugging her dear granddaughter. Not to such loving hearts as yours. What a beautiful story, Holy. Yes, the importance of Christmas is being with your family and being happy with whatever you get. Now off with you kids. See you next time. To watch more videos, please subscribe. Hidden plants and trees. On the fourth day, God created the sun to shine in the day, the moon and stars to come out at night. One day, Moses went to Mount Horeb with his sheep. There, God appeared to him as a flame of fire in a bush. Since there was no room anywhere else, they decided to spend the night in a stable. Here. Mary had her baby, Jesus. She wrapped him in a blanket and put him to sleep. He's got the whole world.